Chapter 6. The Composition, Responsibilities, and Operations of the Revitalized Militia of the Several States. Although patriots are now presented with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to change our country's course by revitalizing the militia of the several states, we can expect no assistance from the entrenched political party leadership that besets us at present. To the contrary, we should anticipate the establishment's rabid opposition at every turn, and therefore we must resort to self-help. Americans ourselves must begin to draw legal, organizational, structural, operational, and statutory blueprints for one, mobilizing and recruiting for the militia of the several states, including a, all able-bodied male citizens at least 17 years of age and under 45 years of age, who are not members of the National Congress or the Naval Militia, whom Congress consigns to the, quote, unorganized militia. B. All able-bodied male citizens of 16 years of age and between 45 and 60 years of age, whom Congress excludes entirely from the, quote, militia of the United States. And C. All able-bodied female citizens from 16 to 60 years of age who are not members of the National Guard, whom Congress also excludes from the, quote, militia of the United States. 2. We must see to organizing, arming, disciplining, governing, and training these individuals for all functions of homeland security within their abilities, to provide for investing them with legal authority commensurate with their duties, and deploying them throughout the states and localities in which they reside. Under properly drawn plans, revitalized militia of the several states will seek to predict and work to prevent situations that endanger, threaten, or compromise homeland security in each state. And where events of that nature prove unavoidable, the militia will provide immediate, massive, comprehensive, and thoroughgoing responses, specifically designed for and directed to each affected locality by citizens who always reside near the scene, have personal ties with and sympathy for local inhabitants, and are intimately familiar with local needs and resources. Revitalized militia of the several states will be organized, armed, trained, and deployed to take appropriate action within the limits of their competence with respect to 1. Declared wars and other hostilities with, invasions by, and subversion from foreign nations. 2. Attacks by, quote, terrorists, subversives, and other international criminal enterprises, gangs, or conspiracies working any political, economic, social, or cultural agenda. 3. Insurrections, conspiracies, or other combinations, whatever their source and composition, aiming to overthrow the national, state, or local governments, or to defeat, prevent, impede, or pervert the execution of the laws. 4. Dissemination through military or industrial sabotage or accident, of hazardous materials of a chemical, biological, or radiological nature. 5. Epidemics and other widespread dangerous conditions relating to public health. 6. Natural disasters. 7. Disasters caused by some human agency. 8. Economic crisis. In particular, the social disorders and political instability inevitably arise out of a hyperinflationary explosion or depressionary implosion of, or other catastrophic malfunction within, the monetary and banking systems. 9. Social crisis. In particular, what might follow a collapse of the social security system, the national or state medical care systems, pension and retirement plans, or other entitlement programs. 10. Influxes in illicit activities of illegal aliens and those persons who aid and abet them, both at the borders and within the homeland. 11. Domestic and international criminal commerce. 12. Corruption among legislators, executive officials, bureaucrats, judges, police, and other public office holders. 13. 
Oppression of the Citizenry by Public Officials in Violation of the Constitution of the United States, the various constitution of the several states, and statutes protecting individual liberties and other civil rights. 14. Usurpation. The exercise of some otherwise legitimate governmental power as to which the particular actor enjoys no legal claim. 15. Tyranny. The exercise of some purportedly governmental, but actually oppressive power, to which no one can claim any legal or moral right, or the misuse of an otherwise legitimate governmental power for the private aggrandizement of the tyrant, and his adherents, rather than for the common good of the people. And 16. All permutations and combinations thereof. To operate in these areas, revitalized militia of the several states will be vested, per force of the Constitution of the United States, the various constitutions of individual states, and whatever implementing statutes may be necessary, with legal rights, powers, privileges, and immunities that authorize them to a. Enforce the laws, b. Deter and quell domestic violence, c. Suppress insurrections, d. Repel invasions in whatever form, e. Secure a free state and guarantee a republican form of government in each state throughout the Union as a whole, and otherwise, f. Maintain the continuity of representative constitutional government in the face of whatever may threaten it. To undertake these activities, revitalized militia of the several states will receive training in the following. 1. Emergency response to terrorist attacks, industrial sabotage, or accidents, epidemics, natural disasters, and like events that involve sudden, widespread, and serious dangers to large numbers of people. For instance, sealing off areas made dangerous by hazardous conditions or substances, enforcing quarantines, or transporting individuals to safety by evacuating them from those places, supplying endangered individuals in the affected areas with radiological, chemical, and biological decontamination equipment, water, food, temporary shelter, medical services, sanitation, basic communications and information services, and engineering services to remove debris and restore transportation networks, and patrolling against and suppressing rioters, looters, and other disorderly persons. 2. Para-police duties aimed at enforcement of the laws in the absence of, or complementary and supplementary to, regular state and local police, including surveillance, ascertainment of probable cause, stop, search, arrest, and seizure of persons and things, identification, custody, and preliminary interrogation of suspects, forensic and other investigatory techniques, and general criminology, especially as it relates to terrorism, subversion, large-scale criminal enterprises, gangs, and so on. 3. Paramilitary activities in conjunction with, or complementary or supplementary to, the armed forces, the National Guard, the Coast Guard, and the Border Patrol, including repelling actual invasions by regular or irregular forces of foreign nations, suppressing insurrections or other extensive domestic violence, and participating in patrols at international borders and elsewhere, aimed at suppressing illegal immigration, apprehending illegal aliens, and interdicting traffic in illicit commodities. 4. Intelligence and counterintelligence operations, including identification and surveillance of terrorist cells, subversive networks, criminal enterprises, and other illicit conspiratorial groups within each state and locality, infiltration of such groups, detection and prevention of infiltration of and influence over state and local governmental agencies and key private businesses by terrorists, subversives, and other criminal elements. And five, prediction of and preparation for 
all manner of political, economic, and social crises. Training experienced by members of the militia of the several states will vary with the subject, the student, the situation, and the surroundings, being designed not only for the specific task in their particular local area, but also in relationship to each individual's age, physical abilities, level of education, skills, experience, aptitudes, and interests. The goal will be to develop within a cluster of several militia companies or other small units from each locale a mix of personnel, all sufficiently trained in every necessary discipline, and some exceptionally trained in certain selected disciplines, collectively capable of dealing in a timely and effective manner with whatever types of problems may likely confront them until more help arrives. All members of the revitalized militia of the several states will be required first to do the following. A. To provide themselves, or in cases of financial inability, to be provided by their own militia companies or by state or local governments with firearms, ammunition, and necessary accoutrements, and to retain that equipment in good order at all times in their personal possession in their own homes, ready for immediate use b. To develop, demonstrate, and maintain personal proficiency with firearms, ammunition, and related accoutrements. c. To become thoroughly familiar with the laws relating to the use of firearms in parapolice and paramilitary activities, particularly the justifications for the threat to use or the actual use of deadly force. and d to become well-versed in the tactics the militia will employ in parapolice and paramilitary operations. And second, they must be trained in techniques of emergency response, including first aid and other basic paramedical skills, firefighting, rescue, quarantine, traffic and crowd control, and related disciplines and methods useful for community service under adverse conditions. Third, they must study nature, ideologies, structures, strategies, tactics, and operations of international and domestic terrorists, subversives, and other criminal elements. And they must train in anti-terrorism techniques applicable to state and local jurisdictions. Fourth, on a rotational basis, they will perform regular anti-terrorism and para-police duties and conduct continuous patrols for apprehension of illegal aliens in their own neighborhoods and local communities and throughout their states when necessary. And they will be deployed to affected states to seal the national borders against penetration by illegal aliens, terrorists, criminal commerce, and other lawbreakers and illicit activities. Fifth, to participate in individual, team, company, and other unit exercises on a regular basis so as to maintain proficiency in all these matters. In order to enable them to fulfill their duties, during the course of their service, militiamen will be invested with all of the rights, powers, privileges, and immunities which local or state police, border patrolmen, and other relevant authorities have and they will be protected against loss of or other adverse effects upon their regular employment. The presence of large numbers of armed, trained, and legally empowered militiamen on patrol or otherwise in the vicinity at all hours of the day and night will clean up numerous otherwise dirty public and private places and facilities, including street parks and recreational areas, public transportation, governmental buildings open to the general public, private malls, shopping centers, hotels, theaters, office complexes, and other businesses that operate as places of public accommodation, hospitals, clinics, and other healthcare facilities open to the public, post offices and private shopping companies, banks, credit unions, and other financial institutions, public and private schools and libraries, and businesses of particular importance, danger, vulnerability, or other concern to the community, such as public utilities, telephone, 
internet, or similar communication centers, fuel storage and distribution hubs, facilities for production, storage, and transport of dangerous chemicals, and manufacturers and distributors of firearms, ammunition, and explosives. Instead of perpetrating, quote, gun-free zones, in which violent criminals receive a governmental guarantee that they may ply their trades without fear of encountering armed resistance from their victims, deployment of the militia of the several states will establish vast zones of deterrence against terrorists and other criminals, and render these areas zones of danger for fanatic or irrational perpetrators against whom deterrence may fail. Moreover, even in the event of attacks by terrorists or other criminals, or some man-made or natural disaster, militiamen in large numbers and with appropriate skills and training will either be present or will shortly appear on the scene to provide whatever assistance may be necessary. End of chapter 6